This journey begins as many three-hour tours have before. On a boat headed to a remote destination. But undoubtedly, unlike any island you've ever visited, this is such a unique project. Welcome to Poplar Island. People did used to live on this island. A man-made marvel almost lost to climate change, now again bustling with life. By the 1920s, the entirety of the town had to move off because they were experiencing such a rapid rate of erosion. Over the last hundred years, the island has changed many hands, once owned by Campbell Soup and the Smithsonian Institution, according to Christina Motley with the Maryland Environmental Service. It has even hosted a number of presidential hunting retreats. We have had a very colorful history. By the mid-1990s, there wasn't much left. The roughly 1,140 acres in 1847, depleted by erosion and sea level rise to less than five. The future? Dim. It would be all open water habitat. That is, until the state and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers teamed up for an ambitious project. I've been working on this project for about 14 years. To actually rebuild the island from scratch. Something that hasn't been done on this scale anywhere else in the world. This otherworldly looking surface on Poplar. This is what it looks like before we start planting into it. Actually comes from here. Dredge material pulled every year from the bottom of the bay's shipping channel leading into the port of Baltimore to make room for those huge ships, bringing in items like clothes, coffee, and sugar that we all rely on. We have to place it somewhere, and being able to put it into a site like this and then use it for um, habitat restoration is a benefit not only to the Port of Baltimore, but then also for the, the environment. The dredge was pumped into individually created cells around the island over four to five years, then excavated and prepared for planting, which took another year to create new wetlands. It's amazing to see how quickly things can change. News 4 was here back in 2016, watching as workers painstakingly planted each piece of grass by hand, one by one. Once the plants are planted, the, the habitat really takes off and the animals do come. And have they come. We've seen numbers grow a lot in the past uh, six years. Turtles, deer, 100 species of bees. The project never expected to get as many species as we did. And more than 200 species of birds are now here, some who migrate from Canada on their way to South America. Almost three dozen nest here, including the endangered terns, which has their own little spot on the island. We felt that it was important to give them the best habitat that they could and make it really beneficial for them to come here and propagate their species. Keller says even more animals are likely to come as they continue to work on the upland portion of Poplar. And I feel lucky that I'm able to be a part of the team. Since construction began in 1998, the island has been replenished to more than 1,700 acres and the dredge will continue to come here for 10 more years. To see it come back, it's a really, it's a great experience to see. Dozens of islands in the bay have been lost over the last century and now, with the success of Poplar, other barrier islands at risk of disappearing are being targeted for saving. I think the big takeaway is that you can do something really successful and impressive environmentally with dredge material. Starting with Barren Island later this year and then the larger James Island in 2024, which is expected to have more than 2,000 acres restored. Places all over the world will come to Poplar Island to see what we're doing here and see what they can implement in, in their countries. Bringing back life to a place that was once on the brink of extinction. Building something like even bigger than us is just such an amazing thing to be a part of. On Poplar Island, Chuck Bell, News 4.